ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدان الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعله عوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين All praises due to Allah the Lord of all the worlds As we know there's a great tragedy happening in the Middle East The tragedy that befelled many innocent people in Israel on October 7th. Any innocent person killed, we should find unacceptable. The Quran tells us, مَنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ إِحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا إِحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ ثُمَّ إِنَّ كَثِيرًا ثُمَّ إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنْهُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْأَرْضِ لَمُسْرِفُونَ For that sake of Adam's elder son killing his, no, his younger son, Cain killing Abel, we ordain for the children of Israel and for all of humanity thereafter. Anyone who kills an innocent life takes an innocent life for other than retribution for murder or spreading murderous corruption in the land is as if they have killed all of humanity. And whoever saves a life is as if they have saved all of humanity. And our messengers have come to them with clear proofs then even after that, even after that, you see many of them going through the earth, working excesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs the political authorities, the authority. Excesses in earth. Excess is mentioned in the Qur'an in many places. But in one place, as general, like in this verse, ثُمَّ إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَالْعُرْدِ لَمُسْرِفُونَ So after that, they go through the earth working excessively, going beyond the limits, transgressing the limits. Allah Ta'ala designates a specific instance فَلَا يُسْرِفْ فِي الْقَتْلِ And do not transgress the limits in killing. 
What does that mean? The Quraysh or the Arabs before Islam, when one of their tribes members were killed, sometimes they were killed a member of opposing tribe, an opposing tribe in retribution. But sometimes they will kill five or ten members of the opposing tribe. So one of the clear meanings is if you pursue retribution, من قتل نفسا بغير نفس if one kills a person other than retribution for murder, killing the killer. Our facade in fil highway robbery that results in death, Dis disruption of the public order. Other than that, it's unacceptable. So yes, we can point to the excesses of Hamas in killing innocent people. But that act is not the reason our brothers and sisters in Gaza are being murdered by the thousands. That's not the reason. If that were the reason, how do we explain 10,000 innocent Palestinians civilians killed during the formation of the State of Israel in 1947-48. How do we explain 5,000, 500 rather, Palestinian villages being torn to the ground during the formation of the state? If the unprecedented savagery of Hamas's attack leads to an unprecedented Israeli response, it's not unprecedented. How do we explain 750,000 Palestinians being driven from their home? How do we explain the premeditated excesses of what's called Plan Balet? How do we explain 18,000 people being bombed in Beirut in 1982, 18,000 dead civilians, 30,000 injuries, if this is unprecedented. How do we explain the massacres in Sabra wa Shatila? How do we explain this if this is unprecedented? It's the very nature of the state These excesses are the nature of the state, which goes back to an early Zionist slogan that no one can deny. My American brothers and sisters, I said brothers and sisters, I'm an American, and as American as apple pie, the question is why? Why should the blues be so at, at home here? Because America provided the atmosphere. America provided the atmosphere and the blues were born born on the slave man's auction block because the blues remembers what the country forgot. That's Gil Scott Heron, not me. How do you explain it, brothers and sisters? It's not unprecedented. It's a logical expression of the slogan that all of us who grew up here, I'm a convert to Islam. I grew up here, and when we were in elementary school, we were singing Havar Nagila, I don't know if I pronounced it right, we were singing the Israeli National Anthem, and they told us, this is a people, a, a land, a land without people for a people without a land. If you're an American, you're over 40 years old, you know this slogan. A land without people for a people without a land. Unfortunately for the sloganeers, there were millions, 
low millions, two, three, one that have two million people in Palestine that had to re be removed so that it would be a land without a people for a people without a land. So the very nature of the state requires ethnic cleansing. The very nature of the state requires no recognition for Palestinian life. That's the nature of the state, not something I want. So it's not unprecedented. It has precedent, and that precedent is rooted in the logic of a land without a people for a people without a land. The logic dictates it. May Allah bless the people, all of them to know peace, to live in harmony. And may these excesses stop. Don't go to excesses and killing. Then after Hamas, they have the Iron Dome, well, the Iron Fist and the Cast Lead and all these operations. Each of which killed approximately 2,000 Palestinians in Gaza. An average of 500 children, far surpassed now, each operation. Over the years. It's not unprecedented. Many people as a result of these excesses cast into despair and hopelessness. What can I do? The first thing you can do is to hate these slaughters in your heart. فَلَمْ يَسْتَتَعَ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَلَمْ يَسْتَتَعَ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ If you see something wrong, change it with your hand. If you are unable to, then speak out against it. If you still can't, hate it in your heart, and that's the lowest level of faith. I'm speaking out. No one can stop me. If they make protests illegal, like they've done in Germany or France, pro-Palestinian protest to protest the massacre of innocent Palestinian lives. I'll be the first one to go demonstrate. I'll be the first one to break that law. Because we know, we owe no obedience to an unjust law. If they say you speak out, you're going to jail, I'll be the first one to go to jail. I'll be the first one to go to jail. We, we have to speak out. We have to educate our fellow citizens about the realities of this situation. We have to have the courage. Go to the library, set up a program. Go door to door. They say we don't control the media. We have our president as a mouthpiece for Israeli propaganda beheaded babies and raped women. And our president is parroting those lies. <clears throat> but he has the media. You have your feet. You can take a DVD produced by the BBC outlining these atrocities and give it to your neighbors. We can organize ourselves, put our money together, produce them by the millions. Organize and mobilize the MSAs. Take them door to door. Go to the mall. Give them out to people. We can think outside of the box and come up with creative ways to let people know. The American lady, Alison Ware, who they call an anti-Semite, she went over there, just an average tourist, 
We saw the blockades, the humiliation of the Palestinians, the systematic disenfranchisement of the Palestinians, the systematic usurpation of their land. You saw the map, the green and less green, less green, and a few green dots that remain for the Palestinians. When she saw that, she came back and she started an organization, If Americans Knew. If Americans Knew. Exposing that. And for exposing, she's called an anti-Semite. For exposing the truth. Our president of our master, for those who know him, if, you might, if you're not a Muslim, you might be visiting. Our president lost his brother-in-law and his nephew since this bombing started. A sister my, my family knows, a friend of our families, who's a very big activist for the Democratic Party, the mentor of Kamala Harris in San Francisco. 30 members of her family were killed last week. 30 members of her family were killed. The Al Jazeera journalist, two days ago, 10 members of his family were killed. Doing exactly what they were told to, leave northern Gaza, go to the south. They went to the south and they are bombed in the south. They get bombed on the roads. And every single bomb is made in America. Organize ourselves, don't pay any taxes. That's something we can do. Every single bomb made in America, every single plane made in America. And we said we're gonna rush more bombs and more and more missiles and more and aircraft carrier groups. And our Secretary of State stands and says, we're with Israel as long as America exists. He pronounced the moral death of America because he said no matter what Israel does, no matter what they do, we're with them. The meaning we have no moral standard that we will judge them by. No matter what they do, if they do 10 times worse than what they're do doing now, we're with them. If the whole world comes together in the Security Council and says we want to censure them, we want to stop this fight, we will veto it. That's the moral death of America. As the great Egyptian poet ah Ahmed Shawqi إنما الأمم الأخلاق ما بقيت وإنهم ذهبت أخلاقهم ذهبوا. Nations are none other than the moral code that supports them, and when their morals go, they will soon follow. Well, this is a good country. It's a good country, but it cannot be great without a consistent moral standard. It can't be great that says the Ukrainians have a right to resist Russian occupation and invasion, but the Palestinians don't have a right to resist Israeli invasion and occupation. You can't be great with that kind of moral standard. You cannot be great with that kind of moral standard. You can't be great when you allow a war machine to use billions of taxpayers' dollars to kill innocent people all over the world. That's what we do. It'd be Afghanistan. And it's not even, we don't even care about winning and losing except in Israel. When, when we went into Afghanistan, who was in power? The Taliban was in power. When we left, who was in power? The Taliban was in power. It's not about winning and losing. It's about filling the coffers of the war machine. 
Afghanistan meant three trillion dollars for the military industrial complex. That's what it's about. That's what it's about in Ukraine. You don't believe me, go to December 28th, 2022, front page of the New York Times. Ukraine war bonanza for the war machine. I didn't write the headlines. The editors of the New York Times wrote the headlines. If you're in, if you're in the war business, you can only stay in business if there's wars. You can only stay in business if you deplete the inventory. And we deplete the inventory by bombing innocent people all over the world. The justifications vary. But the end result for the military industrial complex that our president, Dwight Eisenhower, warned us against. Did he not? He warned us against the entrenchment of a military industrial complex. He initiated the term in popular culture. We have to speak out against it. We have to speak out against it. We have to refuse to participate in it to the best of our ability. And we have to pray. Have to pray for innocent people. Innocent Israelis, innocent Americans. You want to see what the, 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 the war machine does? It's not without, without irony that right at the height of this bombardment using American bombs and weapons and planes, at the macro level, you get this massacre in Maine outside of Auburn, Maine at the micro level. Because the, 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 the domestic lobby doesn't want a ban on assault rifles. Says this guy, who is he carrying? An AR-15. We don't want a ban on assault rifles that are weapons of war. <coughs> because that means no sales. And no sales means no profits. And no profits means no dividends for the stockholders. It means the CEO getting fired. So 18 innocent lives are mowed down with a military-style assault rifle. So, oh, brother, the NRA, they're going to get you. They already got me. <laughs> I've been targeted in the past. Pun intended. No pun intended. I hope the pun's not intended. Targeted metaphorically. But we have, when does the madness stop? When does the madness stop globally? And when does the madness stop domestically? When does it stop? Speaking of madness, this guy was a madman. Again, not because I say so, the army says so, the guy's in the reserves. He was in training. They flagged him and sent him to a mental hospital. And he still got his hands on an AR-15. When does the madness stop? When do we as a community, not one isolated individual, as a community, stand up and say, Men qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsan aw fasadin fil ardi fa ka'annama qatala nasa jami'a Whoever kills an innocent soul is as if they kill all of humanity. All of humanity, whoever they are. When do we stand up with one voice? When do we assume the voice of the prophets? لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُنَا The prophets came with this message. Jesus came with this message. Moses came with this message. David, Isaac, Abraham, the sanctity of innocent life, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with this message. Al-ulama wa rafatul anbiya, the scholars are the heirs of the prophets. May Allah give us tawfiq, may Allah make things easy for us. 
May Allah bless all the people, Jews, Christians, Muslims. Christians are dying in Gaza. They blew up so many hospitals. One, then they blew up a Christian hospital. Oops, we didn't do that one. Palestinians did that one. We don't kill Christians. You need to talk to the people in Gaza. Hundreds of Christians have died. They live side by side with their Muslim brothers and sisters. Their churches, the third oldest church on earth was bombed by these people and destroyed. Greek Orthodox Church in Gaza. The Christian Ahli Hospital was destroyed. Over 500 people killed. It's not about Christians, it's not about Muslims, it's not about Jews. It's about innocent lives. And it's about a reckless, bloodthirsty policy and leadership in this country that don't have the moral courage to stand up and stop it. May Allah give us the courage. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah keep sympathy and empathy in our hearts for innocent people, men, women, and children. Who cry out, Rabbana khrijna min hadihi al qarrit al zalimi ahliha. Save us from tyrants and oppressors. May Allah give us tawfiq. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru alli wa lakum. Wa li sa'il al mu'mineen ya qum astaghfiru Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم there are people who will say, or listen to this kind of message, say, you know, brother, that's very unpopular. <coughs> if we follow the ways of the prophets, the prophets weren't in a popularity contest. <coughs> Jesus was unpopular during his time. Was he not? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was unpopular during his time. He was so unpopular they called him a sorcerer. Sahir. They called him crazy, majnoon. This isn't a popularity contest. We don't leave, leave, live to please people by compromising our principles. We live for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ridwan Allahi hu akbar. The pleasure of Allah is greater. May Allah ta'ala, Almighty God, bless us to do those things that please Him. Allahumma, Allahumma wa thaqna jami'an ila ma anta tuhibbu wa tarda. Ila ma anta tuhibbu wa tarda. Ila ma anta tuhibbu wa tarda. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمسلمين والمسلمات